uh, when you're coming up with ideas 77 episodes in, it gets a bit thin on the ground. Done it a little bit. A little bit. I said, let's do a QA. and a <laughs> Josh said, no, it's too late. Because I said, what about animals you could knack? <laughs> it's basically what I said. I saw a bald eagle at the zoo the other week and I, I was shocked. I didn't. I mean, I knew they were big, but I didn't know they were that big. It picked me up and take me. I don't think one can pick you up. Ah, like, Look after me. <laughs> Adam, carry on the podcast. <laughs> Do you about that story when like a zookeeper like fell into the thing and one of them ripped his f***ing testicles off? I think I could rip your testicles off. If I grabbed all the right, bollocks, I reckon I could pull it clean off. <laughs> <laughs> so no way to find out. Hi, I'm Adam. And I'm Josh. And this is the Breaking Bread podcast, which if it were a food would be, I don't know what you think, like gruel, muesli, peas pudding, just a general bowl of this tasteful slop. But it'll uh, it'll keep you going till lunchtime, you know. How's it going, mate? I'm, I'm good, mate. I'm good. I've got a joke for you. Yeah, go on then. Uh, what sort of key opens a banana? I don't know. A monkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those so bad it's good jokes. My daughter told me that joke. I don't know where she got it from there. Yeah. Also, School, um, maybe. We, we can get rid of the father in fails section of the podcast, I think, now. We should have father in wins. My two-year-old child had three poos on the potty this weekend, which would have probably done you proud. For sort of like in ratio, you'd assume like a, a child this big would have a poo, maybe this big. No, it was massive, a really big mate. pig. Massive P- pig, P- big poo. <laughs> <laughs> and that's life of it. Uh, I thought when when you said I've got a joke for, you, I thought you were just going to point at the broken sign. Yeah, you might have sussed it. We're, we're so broke that uh, the yeah. sign's broken. We cannot we cannot afford to repair it. So we're hoping. Um, that, I don't know, it maybe just comes back on, like maybe I'll punch it after this and it, it might just that's illuminate what you, that's again. What you get for buying a light from, uh, Is it from Brad, China? Bradford Market. Oh, it's from Bradford Market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not good, mate. Not good. Anyway, how you been? I'm all right, I'm all right mate. George. It's been a little while since I, s- I saw you. Yeah, it's been a little minute. I don't know why you're wearing a, a hoodie though, because it is still red as in the studio. It's not, and it's not warm. It, it's what? We're getting started early this morning. I left fact, the house. It's not red hot in the studio today. It's... Sort of just average, mate. Are you joking me? George, you sunstroke? What? You've been out? Do you have a... Another, I trained, I trained this morning. Gains, do you know what I mean? Can you tell? Yep. Yep. So 100%, yep. yeah. Right. Good. <laughs> George, how are you, mate? Yeah, not bad. Yeah? Not you been bad. on the pole this weekend? No, not this Slinging weekend. Slinging around Halifax? No, no? Not this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Any ladies in the comments? George is single? You've got, you told us to let, let everybody know, didn't you? Definitely didn't tell anybody. Okay, it, all right. Tell anybody know. Bleep that out then. Uh, and what should we start with the YouTube comments? Time as for a YouTube do. comment from George. He's, he's fucking high this morning. Got really <laughs> so much sugar on his uh, on his shreddies or something. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. Okay, so his first comment is from A Quiet Corner. Congratulations on 20k, lads. Really interesting episode. Unbelievable, Jeff. Unbelievable. 20,000. That is, that is mad, yeah. 20,000 people. And 75 episodes we're in, aren't we now? This is episode 76, I think. Six, so, uh, oh, no, probably not. You're going to find... 77 or 78, is it? maybe. You're going to find out in this episode how hard it is to come up with ideas when you're 77, <laughs> <laughs> you 77 episodes in. We're going to need to start planning, like, what happens for the 100th? I know. George Maybe we have to that, take it know. on the road or something. We have something. to do some sort of special. What, where should, what should we do? Oh. Come on, quick thinking. Just don't think about it, just say it. What should we do? Go. I think road trip. Road trip. It. Where about should we go on a road trip? Uh... I, I just nearly said Chechnya. That was, <laughs> why, why, why Chechnya? I don't know. Uh, Belgium. Belgium. Right. We're off, to Belgium. We're off to Belgium to record a podcast and have some waffles. We can go to the, I've been to Belgium. What, um, Hagendaz. You can get, we'll get some, we'll go to the Hagendaz Museum. We'll have waffles with some chocolate. And I'm pretty sure, that, what's the beer from Belgium? Uh, Is that Cronenberg? I thought it could be a few. Oh, Might be Cronenberg. I thought that was a Czech one, isn't it? No. Maybe. Google it. Quickly Google it. Berg. No, I'm not, I don't think that's Belgian. I think it is. I think uh, maybe it's no. Is it Stella? No, surely not. That could be. It might be I think Stella. that might be, yeah. I don't like that stuff. <laughs> it's a little bit too strong for me. <laughs> don't know. Is it lager? Yeah. I've been mm. I've been to the Hagen House Museum. I'm pretty sure there's like a, a beer museum there as well. That's where we should record a podcast. Beer and ice cream. Beer and ice cream. Well, I don't think it's Stella, but I also don't know what it is. Oh, fuck nothing's, me. Nothing's jumping out. Does anybody want a job as the fella in the corner? <laughs> Bring back stuff? Mike. Bring back Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you, A Quiet Corner. Um, 20,000. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought it? 
Yeah, yeah. We need to uh, 5X that now and get ourselves a play button. Yeah, we, we, you can, we said this last time, I'll let you put your name on it. So that's the only way you're getting a silver button, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Maybe we're making a comeback. We've got a video for my channel. Yes. Yeah, I thought it might actually be on the channel. What, when's it going out? When's my video going yeah. out? Oh, I don't know. Maybe like... What? You only just get you fucked it up the first like yeah. we just filmed a video like short, quick quick short but story. This is a testimonial. You uh, get on the website, Josh. Yeah, well, none of your clients are actually listening to this. <laughs> well, I hope they're not anyway. Um, but yeah, we we I filmed a video right, but I paid the the, the crew to uh, to film it for me because it, it was required, and uh, I I got the final delivery and noticed that half of it hadn't been color graded by uh, Josh over <laughs> here. So uh, so by half he means one click. <laughs> There was one clip that disabled clips, mate. an adjustment layer. <laughs> Plus you haven't paid yet, so technically we're still in the paid. delivery stage. Think about it. I paid. wouldn't invoice you until it's completely done, signed well, off. So I'm still the there, so you take 500 quid off for that. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> George's bonus, so it's like... <laughs> <laughs> next comment. Uh, next comment. James Riley says, someone sensible with you two lovable numpties is a perfect combo. Great podcast. I agree with that. Damien. I, I agree with that, yeah. There's, there's something about like... We loaded him, re- a, re- a regular person. <laughs> yeah, but it, there were a lot of cuts. <laughs> he got involved with some of the uh, the more juvenile humour, but then I think he thought, shit, if somebody comes over from my my channel and they're looking for financial advice, I they think, don't want somebody talking about think of the skin. stuff that actually got kept in as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, had cut, we had to cut a few bits out. He was a good lad though, wasn't he? He were a to- he's a top bloke. I, I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to use the past tense there. Yeah, he's, he's, he's still alive. <laughs> yeah. I keep, I keep meaning to tap him up and like, I know he doesn't give advice on his channel, but I'm thinking... Come on, tell your old mate here what's a what's what, what's a solid investment. What to do with all your dough? I reckon it'd help you. Well, no, no, I don't. I don't need that kind of. I just mean like you know, want like a gamble, like to oh, tell me like because like, he's dice. always all about, yeah. he loves his Vanguard, doesn't he? I want a bit of risk. I'm not putting like my my life savings in there. Just you know, if I feel like a little bit of a, a gamble on some stocks, so I can feel like Gordon Gecko or some shit. <laughs> anyway, you, you, should buy, you should buy an old uh, classic Nissan and hope that it goes up in value. A big a, 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 a bird pooed on that this week, this this weekend. But like a massive shit, like it must have been like a, an albatross. Let me guess like as well. Just, yeah, wiped it off. No, I just left it there. I mean, so, <laughs> so that's going to be baking in and ruining paintwork now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but I'll get when I actually bother to drive it again, I might get it washed. We'll yeah, but see. isn't it like a, like acidic or you know like a seagull shit? It'll ruin the paint. No, it's always on the windscreen. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, sound. Next comment. Next comment from Robert Kelly. Brilliant and informative episode. Really enjoyed it. Good to see you can still, after such an informative episode, you end with something about bodily fluid. Uh, yeah, I know. It was a bit of a curveball, that. Like, you noticed in the episode, I thought, should we do a festival? Should. But we went and We there. probably shouldn't have done. I mean, we never really should, but... I, I, think, I think Damien enjoyed it. He did. He enjoyed it too much, didn't he? That's why we had to cut loads out. <laughs> no, let's be honest. Yeah. And we've got one more comment from Adam's latest video. From Sean Michael 5. Sean Michaels, isn't he a wrestler? (laughs) He says, something tells me Mrs. Beard won't be too happy with this episode. (laughs) Well, is that the... (laughs) I was nearly sleeping here last night. I'm in the doghouse well and truly after that heart attack grill episode. Yeah, she had a twinkle in her eye for you, I reckon. No, I did. why did you, she was just friendly, man. People out there work for tips. You're like one of those awful uh, men yeah. that objectify women for no reason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, but, so, yeah. I, no, I think it was the spanking thing, Josh, what, is what they were getting at. But uh, no, Mrs. Bird had a good, I, she did, I'm joking, she had a good laugh at me. Because uh, they weren't, you know, I did the other one in Canada where it was like a bit of a knockoff and they just kind of, they yeah. hit me hard, but it was like a paddle, yeah. which feels like it should be worse because it's like a solid, solid yeah, yeah. But that's like a cat and nine tails or some shit. They whip you with a, um, <laughs> a, a, a heart attack grill. So because it's got, you can really whip it. And she she knew what she's been working there 11 years, right? She's figured out that whole kind of masochistic shit. Uh, oh no, it's the other way, right? Say, say this shit. <laughs> so she, it's, my left ass cheek was feeling that for a few days. It left a mark. I was going to film it for the video, but I... <laughs> what your ass cheek? Yeah, but that's why I didn't. Right, it's a bit. I, I, if I, I would have had to shave it because it's a bit hairy. Do you have to sign a waiver? Because like, Americans love a good sewing session, don't they? Do you have to sign a waiver to say? That, no, I don't recall that you had that's to. That's surprising. I would have got it in the video, I think. But I think that, that place is just like martial law there, really. Yeah. You know, it's like a law <laughs> to itself. Like cops don't come by or anything; they just do what they want. And but yeah, it was a f- fun episode. I think it was. A, it were it were good. I liked how you started that. Uh, going on, stepping onto the scales. Nice little cut one. It had the wide shot straight. Nice. Wow, that was how I like, slick that, you know, that was smooth. Almost like I know what I'm doing, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. And then you were seven pounds heavier at the end of it. 
It was cool. that, that was the cool thing, is it? Like yeah. I'd already put on. I went to that start that trip at 152 pounds. By the time I got to Heart Attack Grill, it was right at the end. It was like 160 or something. Yeah. And then I got weighed at the end. I had a, had a, a spark in my brain. Thought, hey, it'd be cool to get weighed on the inside scale. And yeah, I was like, eight, it, that, that food must have been on and drink was like about eight pounds because yeah. it was 168 pounds at the end. Luckily, most of that's transient. I'm all right now. But what did it taste like? You know, cause you said it, well, you said it was like super rich, but like oh, it was weird, man. It was it was not unpleasant. A lot of people because I, I I've got a couple of friends who've been there and they were like, oh, the food's terrible, mm. but I actually really enjoyed the food. It's it's really rich and it tastes very fatty naturally because it's deep fried in lard or whatever. Um, but I didn't not enjoy it, and it's really easy to eat because like because the the fat content. But I felt really weird afterwards. Like uh, you always get, you know, if you eat a lot of food your body temperature elevates naturally because yeah. that's your body's reaction to it to maintain homeostasis, tries to burn off more uh, energy as heat. But after that, probably because of the calorie density of it, I felt re- I felt like I was cooking from the inside out. I felt super hot. Like I had the AC on in the car and like I, I was getting back to the hotel and I had like, uh, I filled up a, a, a sink and put some, you know, you get that the machine at the yeah, hotel, yeah. put like ice in it and put like my hands and my head in it because I was really, really, really hot. So I, I was, I don't think I was ever in danger of being hospitalized, but I felt very strange afterwards. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? Like, cause you don't, you don't ever see the consequences. Obviously when we did that chicken wing uh, video, like I felt so rough after that. And like I said, my piss was stinking. It was like, it was pure fat that were, that were weird out of that. Yeah. Well they say like, cause I didn't, almost didn't want to put, you know, the 20,000 calorie burger. Cause I'm looking at it like, that's got, that can't be 20,000 calories, but it's been, they had Guinness world records, you yeah. know, measure it. So I felt comfortable enough to put it in the title. And even when I'm eating, I'm thinking it can't be 20,000. But then as I'm driving home, I'm like, whoa, I'm like ridiculously hot. So maybe, <laughs> maybe it is, you know, but there was that and the, sh- the shake as well with a piece of, Boy. just a piece of butter on top for no reason. The jello shot as well. That was not pleasant. Just getting that straight down the back of your throat. Like it was funny watching. <laughs> yeah, she nailed that one down your throat. <laughs> like, yes, um, we, yes, we do it in one. I'm like, do you have to do it in one? Yeah, we have to do it in one. Okay. That's gold for a video though, isn't it? Like that yeah, is that's, proper gold. That's why I ordered it. I had no intention of drinking all that wine. Let me tell you, I fucking hate wine, but I thought it'll be good for the thumbnail. And then if I lose, I get a spanking. Real shame. <laughs> <laughs> that boy that uh, came in after you, who, what, how much do you have to weigh to get a free meal? 300 pounds? 350 pounds you have to weigh. Because he was behind you on it and you were like, oh, do you get the meal for free? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, you shouldn't be there, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, that's mean, not, you should be proud of that. Get it's cool though that they get, I suppose at some level that they give you, I get it some marketing point, but like the fact they actually do give you free grub. But 350 pounds eating Savvy lard co- covered burgers. What did you make of Vegas in all then? Like, I know we've probably gone we've over probably this when you came this, back, yeah. but like, I, I think it, down on Fremont Street, I think it's fucking class down there. I think it's cool. I, th- I thought it would be like a way, I thought it would be a more, like a real den of iniquity. I thought it'd be like really grimy and, and kind of horrible yeah. at some level, but I thought it was, it's, it's a pretty small town, I think, in, in many ways. Like, it's, it's cool. There's a lot of shit to do there. And obviously, it's built around human excesses and vices and whatnot. But I don't think it's, it's full of lots of nice people. I thought everyone there was mega yeah. friendly. Compare that to, like, some of the places I went to in Texas, which are less friendly. <laughs> and New York, which is never friendly. Um, but, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I'd go. I'd definitely go back. I want to go back. I, when I watch now, I'm like, ah, man, I missed that. It'd be nice to go back. You're hankering for me to say, hey, do you want to film, like, a series? Oh, I don't want to go with gonna, you. You don't want to go? No, you're right, right miserable fine. fuck. Like, I couldn't fine. spend a week with you in Vegas. <laughs> unless, you were, unless you were not filming and you were just on the beer. You're a good laugh after a beer, like. I know. But yeah, not, yeah. not filming. <laughs> that could, we have to do some work. Maybe we could just go for a week or something. Maybe we do one road trip. One video at the end of the, the trip, that'd be it. I reckon we <laughs> so go for a week. What, so you, I don't think that's going to fly with Mrs. Beard. What are you doing there? Oh, you're totally just work. Yeah, we're going to do Josh seven days. You, just, <laughs> just doing one video. We're going to do the Heart Attack Grill again with Mrs. Beard. We're going to do seven days in Vegas. And on the last day, we're going to film a video. <laughs> Say hello to that waitress again. Honestly, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, 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 on that, It'd be nice to go on holiday. I've booked two holiday. Well, I'm going to Greece in the summer because my, like, so nice. the stag do I were on last weekend. <laughs> listen, right? The stag do I were on last weekend. They're getting married in Greece. Oh, yeah. So we have, obviously it's reciprocated because he came to my wedding in Vegas. Mm. But again, one of his other guests is now getting married in Cyprus next year. So we've now had to book that. So like I've had to do seven grand in holidays bookings in within 12 months. Just because, like, I'm, a, I'm a, of age. Yeah, I'm of heart, age now. Heart, of like, my heart bleeds for you. <laughs> I'm of age. Of oh, I've, got go, I've got to go to Cyprus. Yeah, Cyprus is really nice. I've been there like three times. I've been a few times. It's ex- way more expensive than I expected it to be. There, it's got, the the currency is very strong, isn't it? It certainly used to be. It was only it used to be the only one that's stronger than the British pound. That's probably loads five now. five nights in in a, in a hotel. 
with flights and transfers, but for three and a half grand for two people and a child, that seems expensive, that. I don't think that's that expensive. Like, in present, present day. I don't know, it seems heavy, that. Know. But Cyprus is really nice, I think. Or it was, I mean, I've not been for like 10 years, so it might I've be only ever been on ship. Like, there's, um, is it Akrotiri, the uh, naval base that's out there? Pretty sure it's an American That naval. sounds like a, a super villain from like the Marvel, <laughs> Marvel franchise or something, I don't know. Yeah, I've only been there. I've not been on holiday, but I'm pretty sure it, I've definitely been there on ship. Um, what else happened this weekend? Oh, Tori and Mike dropped another <laughs> clanger in the chat. So, and how did we get onto the topic, Adam? Actually, <laughs> I think you didn't. Um, I don't know. How do we get onto this? How do we get onto this? This, this is why I'll we haven't have kicked Ad, we, we haven't kicked Mike out because of this gold that he keeps dropping in on our laps. He must be like deprived of sleep or something. I don't know, or drunk. I don't know why he keeps telling us stuff. For those of you who don't know, yeah, Mike is the guy that used to do George's job. If I'm being honest, slightly better. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's, he's, he, he, left, he, he went back to Liverpool, didn't he? And his uh, his wife's now, uh, he's about to have his first child. So congratulations on that, Mike. But yeah, I think he is, there's something going wrong in his head lately uh, because he's he's telling us about shaving his feet, which is fine. But like, he's, he, not. he's really proud of the fact that he shaves his feet and uh, uh, some other weird stuff. And it, I think he's he's reached the apex of that lately with this this thing that he came out with at the weekend. Um, I don't know how it started, but I remember he, he put the message in the chat about it. And, and nobody, nobody replied. <laughs> no one replied. I've got it, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, so, <laughs> John, I won't read the fest hall out, but um, it's because it's a little early in the podcast. We normally leave us. It started oh, yeah. with the fest hall. You, n- predictably, you sent one of the 50 fest halls. You oh, you got to play it now. Come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> we get an early fest hall. Run, run the jingle. <laughs> yes. It's time for a fest hall. Coming from you. This has not been vetted, by the way, so I don't know if we can say it, but it's, it, the festival is, my partner thinks his sexual stamina is impressive, and it kind of is, but also makes me feel unattractive. One time I'd love him to be a one-pump chump <laughs> to make me feel like he can't resist me. So that's actually pretty tame for a festival. That right? is fest, yeah, yeah. But then Mike replied and said, he's ever done that, like, a one-pump spunk. I have it was boss-like. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we're all thinking he's joking, but nobody can really tell if he's joking, so nobody replies in the chat. <laughs> and then the next morning you had said, I love the fact that nobody has replied to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, like, and we were all kind of like, are you joking, Mike? But then he proceeded to tell us for the rest of the whole day yeah. how it was a good thing to only be able to last one stroke <laughs> in, in the throes of carnal relations. <laughs> so we were kind of like, well, how was he trying to... <laughs> say that this is a good thing it might be good for the man but part, part of love making right is yep. that you you you, you, uh, you take care of your, your partner whoever that might may be yeah. so I'm we're saying look Mike Mrs. Mike probably is not going to be very happy if you're only lasting for <laughs> one throw of the dice for you know? like an entry <laughs> and he's like no she's fine Mitch yeah. I'm like well maybe you want to talk to her about that I don't know but I know, I know Mrs. Beard would she'd never let me hear the fucking end of it I remember <laughs> I remember one of the first, this, shall I go down this path? Yeah, let's go. Down, let's go. <laughs> I remember one of the, I think it might, I, one, of the, one of the first or second times, like I, Lindsay and I had the, you know, we did the bad thing. And um, I was a bit excited, you know? Thing. Yeah. Cause was, it's probably it bit, bad. I mean, the bad thing, I was in like, you know, the, 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 yeah, we knew each other biblically. I'm trying to say we just had sex, right? Um, and I remember like, I, I didn't, I'm normally my, my stamina is actually quite good, probably because I'm circumcised, right? Yeah. I, I'm I glad we got that in there. I don't want to get too detailed, but like it gives me an unfair advantage, right? Yeah. But it's a good thing, right? Cause it makes me look like some kind of sexual God when I'm really not um, far from it. But um, this time, I don't, I think it was one of the first times we did it as well. Maybe the, the first time. And maybe I was just a little bit excited, you know, because I was, uh, yeah, I, I liked Mrs. Beard. I, mean, I like, <laughs> still like, it. but um, I, I think it maybe I lasted like a couple of minutes at most. Right. And I felt pretty, I, it takes a lot for me to feel embarrassed, but I, still, <laughs> I was thinking like, oh, she's going to think I'm like some absolute chump here. <laughs> and uh, she did, she was very, very kind about it. But if that happened now, she'd yeah. just laugh at me and she'd hold that, she'd probably tell all her mates yeah. and she'd hold it above me. And I wouldn't mind now because, you know, we've been together fucking too long but, um, <laughs> but back then I was like oh that's terrible so I don't it's know how Mike thinks it's a, it can be a good thing right I'm not saying it's, I'm not judging anyone but I'm just you can't really he's trying to argue that it's a good thing yeah because that was that was, like that was the funniest part that he was like oh yeah this is it feels great like it, it were amazing <laughs> for you but yeah like what about poor Mrs. Mike <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> can I play the can I play the voice? Oh yeah, message? that was the yeah, we had a back and forth. And then so like, I'm with all my family and then we hear this voice note coming to the chat. I, I was laughing so hard <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. And he's not a voice note guy. No, I'm not. 
Mike, Mike, stop me. There's, there's, just, there's no way that you can argue that reaching climax, right? Reaching <laughs> orgasm with one pump, one, one placement of your dick inside Mrs. Mike's vagina is a good thing. You cannot rationalize that. It's just not going to fly. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted him to stop, man, because he kept, he kept like, doing, so we're like, he no, like, Mike. He won't drop it, but he wouldn't drop it. He's like, no, it's great. You want to try it sometime, Mike? Like, he's what? dead, he's dead. <laughs> no more. He yeah. just kept going. I should not meet, you know, from The Simpsons when they kill the hamburger. I'm like, he's, he's already dead. Stop, he's already dead. <laughs> And then, and then I said, I can't wait till Monday so we can so record a podcast and talk all about it. <laughs> so that, that's why Mike's still in the chat. Let us know if you've had any, had any one pump orgasms. We'd love to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was great. Send right. George a, a DM directly. We'll put his, uh, his Instagram handle here. <laughs> You're not a one pump jump, are you? No. Good no. lad. George is single, by the way. Uh, next talking <laughs> point on this podcast is... You're too full of energy, you. <laughs> right, man. For a Monday morning, let's go. Have you had let's a go. How many coffees have you had? I've had a couple. He put some fucking ecstasy in his muller corner or something. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he's done this morning. Um, you were quite happy this weekend, so there were a big uh, fighting event on at KSW. By the time this comes out, it probably been about four weeks ago for those that are listening. <laughs> um, KSW did a Col- the Coliseum event. Uh, Scott Askin versus Mamid Kaladoff. Um, but you saw a boxer knock out an MMA fighter. I thought it was well prepared. I thought Josh is going to love this, right? Yeah. I'm send him a video because I saw, somehow saw it on Twitter. A guy was in, don't tell me, he was at the bottom and somebody else had full mount yeah. on him. Yeah. 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 Probably the worst position you could be in. Yeah, so he's he's getting, he's about to get, he's already been grounded. He's about to get pounded. <laughs> and this guy's like laying him on thick, but the dude on the bottom's a boxer. So he's kind of like uh, absorbing the punches. And then just out of nowhere, he just kind of goes like, Poof from the bottom and knocks the guy out on top. And it's the first time that ever happened, right? Yeah. So I thought Josh was going to want to know about this. He probably had already seen it, but I thought it'll give him something to talk about in the podcast and waste five minutes. So go ahead. No, oh, yeah. I mean, like you said, it, it, <laughs> there's not much more that can be said from that. It was in the most dominant position, which is kind of like, I, I believe the other fight, I don't know the other, I, I don't know the fighters actually. I just saw the clip, but apparently we were a boxer, um, a championship boxer. He was in full mount. So it's, again, if me and you had a fight, that'd probably be the most beneficial position to get into because you've kind of fucked. You just the guy threw up a left hand and just caught him on the button and just put him out. Yeah, he just fell over him, didn't he? It's, it was amazing. I saw the, um, the referee with that Mark Goddard, who's like, one of, he's a, a, from Birmingham, a British uh, referee, does all the UFC events. And he was like, this is why you've always got to expect the unexpected because no one had ever seen it. No one had ever expected it. Um, but yeah, what a shot. Um, but how long was he in like, uh, do you know how long he was... Uh, mounted full, full mount yeah I don't. So imagine if you were doing watching that in play i wonder what the odds would have been like in play for the other guy to win imagine put the money on yeah mad yeah i don't know but fair fucks to him he uh <laughs> he got that knockout from underneath um so as we said at the start of this podcast uh when you're coming up with ideas 77 episodes in gets a bit thin on the ground done it a little bit <laughs> Little bit. I said, let's do a Q and A. <laughs> Josh said, no, it's too late. <laughs> but luckily, Tori Mike stepped up and uh, threw us a, a little graphic. Hang on, wait, wait, wait a second. Mike did put the graphic on, but the genesis of the idea was me because I said, what about animals you could knack? <laughs> it's basically what I said. And I think that, that wasn't really a fully formed idea, but uh, then Mike gave us some kind of thing that he did at university. So Mike gave us this graphic and. The graphic is for those that are listening. It's nine squares, and it's and, and at the bottom it says, "Pick two. Uh, they will defend you, and the rest will come to kill you." So on the nine squares, this is what we're going to try and figure out. Today. We're going to put it up on screen, though, right? So yeah, we're going to put it on see. screen if you're watching. But obviously, those that are listening, you've got what looks to be like some form of eagle, um, and this eagle. I don't remember an eagle. Yeah, top left, an eagle, and there's fifty of them. Then you've got an alligator in the middle, or possibly a crocodile, uh, and there's ten of those. <laughs> Top right, there's a bear. You've got three bears. A bull, seven of them. One sniper, 15 wolves, 10,000 rats, five gorillas, and four lions. So there's nine squares, and this is us good. We're going to try and figure out a debate. If you pick some, George. Uh, No. All right, you might have to interject a little bit, but pick pick, pick two of these. They will defend you. Yeah. The rest is the rest is coming to kill you. The rest are coming to kill you. <laughs> Come on now. I know it's like a meme, but grammar's not optional. Mike made the made the graphic. So I mean, I am actually like when this came in the chat, Mike said that him and his boys had been debating this for about three months. I think <laughs> it's quite, it could be quicker than that. To me, it looks. I'm, I think it's pretty straightforward. But I mean, 
Max throwing the cat amongst the pigeons there. I feel like we need to get like a little, uh, you know, like uh, Randy has that little teddy bear that he puts on the table. Yeah. Could we, you reckon, get like a... The Mike one. Like, but yeah, but like, it's, so it looks like Mike. Like a little Muppet. Yeah, like, Lynn's got one made of me ages ago. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but like a cushion style, like it, it's basically a cushion in the shape of a doll with my head on the top. I don't know why she got it, but um, could we get that like of Mike? We'll get one, we'll get one made. Or even like a, just a life-size cutout. We can put it in front of the broken light to <laughs> stop people commenting about that. Your light's broken. That's definitely going to be in there. Somebody's going to leave that comment. <laughs> right, Adam, come on. I want you to go first, mate. And what, like me and George are going to try and debunk your uh, your thought process. I don't think this can be debunked. Right, okay. So so we, we've got 50. I don't want to just, I, I won't repeat them all, but um, that is like definitely an eagle. It looks like a fucking eagle. It's yeah. not a pterodactyl, is it? So... No, but it could be any one of the other I don't know, two hundred thousand species not, of birds. Not a pigeon, right? I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go. I'll tell you what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with the sniper and Oof. the gorillas. Really? No, no questions. And yeah, the, the, I mean, think about it. I mean, I suppose first of all, you've got to factor in the, the animals' intelligence, the, the ones that are coming to kill you, right? So I'm fairly certain I could get away from an alligator, for example. Ten of them, right? They're not that sprightly, are they? That like if well, alligators, yeah. They can, they can move quickly, but not a human can sprint, a healthy human could sprint away from an alligator. I don't think that's true. I think that's definitely true. Uh, well, they like, <laughs> they take their time, don't they? They're very sort of slow. Yeah, they, 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 they the they attack. Yeah, right? based they're, upon stealth, mate. Yeah, yeah the, the cold blood. They, they will not just like chase you. Yeah, they're going to, you could, A, first thing I've got to do is just get away from the water, right? <laughs> Second, so uh, the reason I mentioned that is okay. that in contrast to that, you couldn't, if there were three bears in your vicinity, you're not getting away, are you? They're going to run you down. Same probably goes for the, what is this? What is the one on the left? Is that like a, an, an oxen or something? Is it a bull or what? It's like well, a bull, yeah. Just a regular bull. Yeah. The lions, you, you know, the, the wolves and the gorillas as well, if they were on the opposing team, you're not going to get away from those, right? But I think the first two, obviously the eagles can fly, but if you're able to navigate to somewhere, say that's heavily, there's a canopy of trees or whatever. Yeah. So I'm less worried about the, the top two, the top left two, so the eagles and the alligators. Do you set some parameters? You're on, you're on a football field. All right, so I'm just in the open. I think, what do you reckon, George? Because this could, this could, you know. Yeah, okay. Do that then. Yeah. So I can't level playing. How playing is that level? Because like, it's already pretty in favour of the animals and the fucking loads of them, are come, including 10,000 rats are coming to kill me. So I've got to be able to like, use the topography to get around them. You know what I mean? I can't just be in a field. You might as well put me in a fucking cage, mate. There's people saying, what the fuck is this podcast? Where's that tree again? Where's the 10,000 rats? But anyway, shall I just get down to like, the nitty gritty, which is basically why I'm choosing the sniper and the, uh, the, the gorillas. Yeah. I assume they're like silverback gorillas or something. Yeah. The reason I'm choosing the sniper- Did the I'm, silverback give it away? Or? Yeah, mostly. Okay. That's actually a bit of light if you look. No, I think it's, it's, it's Mike shot it because the, the back's overexposed <laughs> by about 15 stops. Um, no, it's, it's, it's the, okay, the world's best cinematographer sat across from us. Who knew it? But best when, in the UK. Mate, lad, when your peer group is like right by takeaway, you can't go wrong. <laughs> the, the bar is not high to get, to get the technical stuff right. Oh, clip that, George. <laughs> we'll send it to him on his wedding day. Yeah, you're going to be shooting his wedding, aren't you? <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, the reason I'm choosing a sniper is it's a human, right? Yeah. So he's got higher levels of intelligence. Yeah, I'm saying to you, right? You go in the crow's nest somewhere. And as all these things come, so it's the bears, I'm going to say like, look, prioritize the bears, take the bears out. He's going to be a crack shot. I'm hoping it's like Bradley Cooper. Is it Bradley Cooper from yeah, that movie, yeah, American Sniper? American yeah. Sniper, yeah. Or, or the dude from Saving Private Ryan who shoots the Nazi guy through the eye. Um, so he's going to be a good sniper, I hope. Um, and I'm just going to say, look, Take as many as you can out and focus on the bears, the lions, the bull. What about if the uh, the eagles go for the sniper? No, because the, I'm assuming if uh, he's a sniper, he's not going to be at fucking eye level, is it? Oh, the eagles. Yeah. Mm. Shit. Well, he's going to be the crow's nest, isn't he? If he's a, any self-respecting sniper, he's going to have slight cover. I'm thinking. Yeah, but if he, the, the, he needs a window opening. So if there's 50 he's eagles... All, he's going to have a ghillie suit as well. If he's my sniper, I'm going to get him kitted out like it's Call of Duty. Ghillie suit so is going to be camouflaged. They're not going to know he's there. Mm, you can't, you can't see, what about like sense of smell though? Like what yeah. they smell them out? Eagles, yeah, well known for their sense of smell. Um, <laughs> fucking know, David Amber right? sat across from his ear. How the fuck do you know? He didn't know either. Don't, don't take this shit from him, George. Well, Call I him out, know. Mom. I t I'm pretty how, how, how do they see, uh, like, when they're flying above, like, so high, how do they spot? Like Brit? a mouse? Yeah. Is it their eyesight? Do you, ever, you guys what? ever watch Brave Star? I might be getting kind of old now, but there's a cartoon called Brave Star. 
Nah. Right, he was like some weird kind of space cowboy. <laughs> and he had like, so he would invoke the power of uh, animals, right? So he would say, speed of a puma. He meant puma, right? But, you know, he was American. <laughs> and he would say, eyes of a hawk. Because eyes and uh, hawks are known for their eyesight. I imagine eagles probably are quite similar. He didn't say nose of a hawk. You know, he might have said like <laughs> nose of an anteater or something like that, or nose of a sniffer dog. But he didn't say that about <laughs> eagles. It's more like the sense of movement right. that I think they can see, isn't it? Like Yeah, that, well, that's what I'm talking about. My sniper's your camouflage but and the gillies. He's going to be moving. George. By shooting. I just shut up. Oh, oh, look at him. I'm challenging it. I'm challenging yeah, it. Yeah. This is my job. Right, okay. That's what I'm here to do. To get, just let me finish the scenario. Yeah, on, you finish. The, then, you, then you drop yeah, yeah, all the on. shit on me, right? right? So he's in his ghillie suit, right? They yeah. can't see him because he's yeah. not moving. All he's got is just the. The, the rifle sticking out. Yeah. Um, and the reason I'm choosing the gorillas <laughs> is I actually did a little bit of research into this, if you'll uh, indulge me for a moment or two. Um, because gorillas are mega strong, right? Yeah. So apparently silverbacks can lift over 1,763 pounds, which is 800 kilos uh, of dead weight, right? That's that's twice as strong as even the most elite strong Hall, humans, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and that goes for like your average gorilla. So no, we're not even talking about the Mr. Olympia of gorillas. We're talking about like your average gorilla on the block. Um, they've also got opposable arms, right? So if you ever watched, uh, you know, like, is it the God, this, not the newest Godzilla movie, but the one, the one with Adrian Brody to link back to last week's episode. Um, the T-Rex loses the fight against uh, King Kong. Uh, yeah. So not Godzilla, um, but like he, uh, he loses the fight against King Kong because King Kong's obviously got arms, right? He doesn't have those little kind of uh, po- almost pointless arms that T-Rexes have. Yeah. So you can like wrestle with uh, the bear, the... the. I, th- I think the fact that you've basically got... Uh, I'm trying to get the grid back up again now. You've basically got five, not just one gorilla, you've got five gorillas. They're probably going to deal with like... The only thing is I'm thinking about the interaction with the rats. Are they like scared of rats or anything? Or is that just elephants? Can we Google that? That's probably just oh, an oh. elephant thing, right? <laughs> On Tom and Jerry. What if they're scared of rats? Elephants they're probably scared not, of rats right? of mice, aren't they? I, but I reckon the biggest the biggest threat here, right, really, is the bear, the, are the bears, the wolves and the lions, right? And I think... Do you think? The, thing, the only problem is there are 15 wolves. That's quite a lot. It's a lot of wolves. But um, I reckon like the sheer strength of the gorilla. And I, in fact, I think if the gorillas are around me, arranged in formation. I don't even think like the wolves are coming near. I don't think the lions are. The bears maybe are. And I think five gorillas beat three bears. Three bears in a fight. No problem. The rats, I'll just boot them all the way. Um, I think you're in the rest of it in the rats. I mean. think you are as well. Yeah, I think the rats are the curveball. I've seen some here. It says 2,000 rats. So this is 10,000 rats on our thing. But 2,000 rats is a house full or a street full of rats. I don't think <laughs> there's any animal currently that can survive a coordinated attack of that many rats. It says that, the, um, I don't know if gorillas are scared of them, but I think they'd just be like, you know, what the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> and just not, I don't think they'd attack it. Well, they would if they're under, I, I assume that if, if like the, the rats are coordinating their attack, then my gorillas at least have to be able to take instructions, right? No? Because otherwise it's even more unfair. If they're, just no. gorilla, if they're just gorillas around me, then they might attack me. I've got to be able to give them like some instructions. Like, they're listen, lads. instructions. But the rats do. No. Which is closer to, to, if there's one that's more likely to understand <laughs> instructions from a human, it's the gorilla, right? We're only like one th- evolutionary step away I think the them. only one on that, that that's going to take any uh, direction are the wolves, because they're kind of like dogs. Do you like dogs? Well, they and you work, fucking hate dogs. They'll work together. Well, that's the thing. Well, like all the other animals in there, well, maybe the lions would. Okay, I think in every scenario, I'll put it this way. I think in every scenario, I'm dying, right? I'm losing. <laughs> but I think the, 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 the ones that I've chosen there, the sniper, who's going to put, he's a crack shot, man. He's not going to deal with the rats because they're too small, probably, right? But he's going to, and the eagles, like I said, I could try to use the terrain to get away from those. The rest, he's going to pick off most of them, I reckon, you know, like the wolves even. And that, I think those two give me the best chance of survival. I wonder how, how many rounds does he get there? Do you know what I mean? He's got one of those like Call of Duty perks where you get infinite ammo. I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> but like it, a ray gun. I think those are the two. Be- if the the question actually is which is the best chance of survival, I think it's those two. I think that's non-negotiable. I wouldn't have ever picked a gorilla as me. Nah, nah. Because they're like my first choice. Really? Yeah, man. Yeah. Strong as shit, man. Do you hear about that story when like a zookeeper like fell into the thing and one of them ripped his fucking testicles off? I think I could rip your testicles off. If I grabbed all, all of right, your bollocks, I reckon like, I could pull it clean off. 
<laughs> Joshua. <laughs> it's the only one way to find out. Well, in this studio, half the time, you won't find him that halfway up my fucking pelvis. Um, you just found he clicked for the start of podcast. <laughs> I never thought I was going to say that today. Um, yeah, that was probably a bad example of strength. I just thought like they, you know, it's un- unrelenting, just pure power, man. Yeah. They're built for power. Like human beings aren't built for power. They're built for like endurance. But gorillas are built for like sheer raw brute strength and they, like i said they've got like opposable they're not limited really they're like a human aren't they they've they're, they're evolutionarily speaking the further along say a wolf which is on like its paws you probably do that thing is that a myth where you say like if you go like that to a, a quadruped like the bones go through its heart and not that i'm advocating it's done i'm just saying like if you're a, qu- a dog yeah do- anything right, with yeah, four yeah. legs where you kind of go out with its legs and it, it kills it or something right i like a like a myth when you were at school wasn't it probably is a myth yeah right? but um i think they're, they're probably more <clears throat> um, resilient than that, but um, I think those two are the, the 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 best chance I have at survival. See, I don't know. I think I think Unless. I think seven bulls beat five gorillas. No, I do. Nah. Shut up, man. Nah. Are you dense? They just like w- they walk around and push it over. No. Yeah, they're not smarter bulls. That's why. Yeah, but look at the horns on that. Imagine seven of them. Just yeah. pe- imagine like right. So this it's five on five, right? And then there's two bulls spare, just pegging them from back. Do you know what no, I mean? Like no, pow. <laughs> Pegging him? Why are you bringing him? Pegging him as in shagging him. I mean, like sticking an awning like the back of the the back in the silver back. The, the gorillas are just like jump on top and just knock them over. Yeah, they they, they, they look at how agile a gorilla is going to be up. by comparison. It could probably jump over as as the bull approaches. They can only go in one direction. They could probably pull its horns off. Yeah, like a bull, a bull, and the, plus a bull. Look at the turning circle of a bull. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, it can't. Um, that's that's the worst. I if, mean, if, you're if, humans, nowhere near. if humans can do the like the bull in the arena thing, like if they can do that and survive, yeah, precisely. Like, come on. All right, maybe. All right, I'm convinced on that one. The one thing, I, the only thing I would say is before you get into yours, can I like the eagles can be on my side? I feel like fifty eagles could take could like pick me up and like drop me somewhere safe. <laughs> you can only have, it's not like Lord a, of the Rings. The Lord, <laughs> I was gonna say the Lord of the Rings defense. You know what I mean? You can only didn't... pick two, though. You picked sniper and gorillas, though, didn't you? Yeah, I'm just saying that, like, if if I if the goal is to survive, if I picked just the gorillas, oh, sorry, just the eagles, they might fly me to safety. Could an eagle hold your weight? Fifty of them could, I reckon. Hmm. Coordinated, as you as you put it. You ever think in Lord of the Rings, why the fuck didn't they just take the eagles to Mount Doom? Yeah, that's what everybody says. <laughs> I've not, not seen it. I don't know if it's a plot or maybe it's like a magic thing, like they couldn't they couldn't fly there or something because like it was cursed or something. No, but yeah. it, you do think that, don't you? you? Think, well, what the fuck? Like when they get the eagles at the end, and they just drop them off back in, uh, you know, the Shire. They always like they drop them off, like not even anywhere near where they're going. It's like just take me all the way. Yeah, like a crap Uber driver. <laughs> what were yours and Josh? See, I I found it tough. I wanted to go. Like, I wanted the sniper as well because I figured he could just pick people off. But then I also want the rats because I think <laughs> the rats are like the little ace card. I think they would be like the underestimated. I think 10,000 rats. How much would 10,000 rats like work? Because imagine just 10,000 rats distracting all other shit and then snipers just pegging everybody off. That's that was what I was thinking. <laughs> you coming back to pegging? Because it's like your favourite like <laughs> verb of the day. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean, pegging used to mean like pegging. I know, I know. Do you know what I mean? Like when you used to play detail, Call of Duty, not but, sticking one up ass. But, but you've used it now for two different things. Like shooting people is now pegging in your, in your eyes. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. But that, like, I think 10,000 rats, that's going to distract all these... Uh, all these other animals. Yeah, they could almost like f- form a barrier around you, couldn't they? Like, because uh, I don't think the rats are going to do any damage to the alligator because they're like dinosaurs, aren't they? So, like, if that's the only thing that needs to be shot first, is the alligator. Well, it, <laughs> your priorities are all back to front. The alligator is <laughs> the least of your problems, man. Why? They're, the, they're probably the slowest there. I don't. Can you Google how fast an alligator is? <laughs> because they're cold bl- blooded, but if it's a sunny day. Do you know what? There have been it's lots of moments in this podcast where I've regretted proposing an idea. This is the highest point of regret. I don't believe you. I think they're faster than you think. Let's have a look. I mean, I'm, I'm not seeing this slow. I remember when I, we used to go to Florida as a kid and you'd say you have to run in zigzags because they can only run in straight lines. Like bulls. 15 to 22 miles per hour. That's pretty fast, that, mate. I could run quicker than that, though. How, how fast is Usain Bolt's uh, sprint? Yeah, if, yeah, I'm, if, if we're at the bottom end, I can run 15 miles an hour, I think. No? Maybe I'm just getting that totally wrong. I mean, I'm not very quick either, so. 27 miles per hour. Is, that, that's Usain, Usain Bolt. Bolt. So what's the average adult's sprint speed? I say average adult. The, the, 
the, the, the from, guy that, from Heart Attack Crew. The absolute, <laughs> the, yeah, the, the, the most athletic goo, the goo, the most athletic yeah, dude in you, the room. I've seen you run. I know, it's not Kate video. <laughs> <laughs> that was my comedy run, though. It was my real run. Yeah, 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 of course it was. Between 14, between 14 and 24, I think. There you go. Ath- athletes will have a much higher. So, 18, but that's the 29. same speed as an alligator. It's so awesome. you've got to just get a, you've got to get a step on it. But yeah, if there's, I mean, I'll there's just ten throw of them, you ever, you ever see me play like attack midfield at the point of a diamond? I'll throw it two step overs. I've seen you running that cake it. shop, and I don't trust yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the the, the rats are, are not going to be able to do any damage to the alligator. Thing is, if a rat, if like ten thousand rats swarmed and got on top of you, surely that would weigh quite a lot. Because one individual rat doesn't weigh a lot, but 10,000 rats. Yeah, it's like when you see someone get attacked by bees in it. There's loads of bees on them. They're not going to fall over, but they're going to be like, it's just distracting. It's just, you can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is a word. I'm so sorry. This, like a word. this was my idea as well. So I don't I, know if we're going to come to a conclusion. At first, I, were gonna, I was thinking it's going to be the sniper and the lions. Because I figured the lions would be a good one because they're super powerful and strong. Powerful and strong? Well, yeah, because strength is a, a weight, whereas like power, I think that's a, a different. The synonyms, mate. Come on. Come on, keep going. <laughs> nah. Powerful and strong are not the same thing. No. What's the equation for power? The equation for power? Yeah. We're going down like a rabbit hole here. Yeah. It's a bit like a rabbit hole, yeah. it's a bit like a talk. Hole, you might like say. talk. <laughs> Talks Newton meters, isn't it? So power is you, measured in watts. If you were part of the thesaurus right now and you type and you look at powerful, you will see next to it strong. Just, but anyway, get, let's, what, what you landed on because you're just fucking around here. <laughs> <laughs> Cho- choose two. You've got to survive, right? To pa- provide for your family. Choose two. I don't know. Power equals uh, work and elapsed time. I don't know. There's no strength in okay. that. I don't know what that is. using bing.com or something? <laughs> <laughs> fucking ask Jeeves over yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get on, ask, uh, get on chat GPT. Um, <laughs> right, so we're, we're taking the sniper. So we both got the sniper. Yeah. I'm, I, my gut was always sniper and lions, so I'm going sniper and lions. Who do you think? Because, in the comment. Oh, because I think a lion can kill an alligator. I think I've seen that. Yeah. I've, I've seen that on David Attenborough. So that's good. Lion's going to fuck up the fox, uh, foxes. <laughs> <laughs> them foxes that like wolves. Um, I mean, Liam Neeson fucks up all, all the wolves yeah. in that movie. Uh, in the film. <laughs> yeah, but it's Liam Neeson. Is Liam Neeson the sniper? Is he the option? Because the once he's gone out of the ammo, he can get down and start oh, yeah. fucking some, some fools up. Put some bottles on his fin- on his knuckles. I think they're, they're going to struggle with the bears because there's only four lions and three bears. That's going to be a struggle. And there's five gorillas. Gorillas are winning that fight every day, man. I don't only, th- only curveball really, I think, is the eagles and the rats because there's so many of them. There is a lot of them. Oh, it's a tough one, isn't it? I reckon the gorillas would be useful for the eagles, though. Because the prob- they come down. Just going to swipe my... Nah, because, I mean, gorillas are agile, but like... It's in King Kong. <laughs> yeah, right. in fact, I referenced it about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great... F- the, the one that Peter Jackson did was quite, quite a good film. With Jack Black in it? And Adrian yeah. Brody. Yeah, yeah. 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 Totally Fuck, forgot. is that the first time we've both seen a film? I forgot the... Yeah. Fuck. Whoa. Timestamp that. <laughs> <laughs> Timestamp that moment. But the, the problem is with this, there is no right answer, right? No. No, nobody's... George, what are you saying? I would definitely pick the gorillas and... Uh, I don't know. It's between the rats and the sniper. I do think the rats will be... So that suggests that like George might be coming down on my side of this because he's got the gorillas... And he's t- I think with the is a no-brainer. I sure. suppose. Yeah, yeah. I'm on with you there, man. You could, if, if you don't have a sniper, you could send your rats to kill the sniper. Because 10,000 rats, mm. that's going to be distracting. You don't find, the, the, he's a sniper. He's going to be hidden. That's the whole point of yeah, rats will find a sniper. How are they going to find him? Rats can get anywhere. Well, he's at the top of a... a they can get there. How are they going to get there? They can get anywhere. Are they magical rats? No, they can climb anywhere. They can eat through stuff. Like concrete. They rats can climb. Eat, rats eat concrete? Yeah. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure rats eat concrete. Rats eat concrete? Yeah. <laughs> that, that cannot be true. I refuse <laughs> to believe that's true. I'm pretty sure that, like I'm pretty sure that's true. <laughs> Let's find out. It, there were a documentary on Netflix about rats. 
And don't remember, they ate through that concrete block to kill that sniper. Rats can chew through almost anything. Wood, drywall, brick, concrete, aluminium, sheetrock and more. I'm not saying they can't chew through it. I could probably chew some concrete. I'm just not going to eat. I mean, you said they eat it like have as seen, if they I, wanted I, I, to. Is through that it. your next challenge? Have you chewed <laughs> through concrete? There was, did you see that? There was a t- uh, Somebody sent me a uh, tweet and they had the World Concrete Eating Championships. And, I, and they said, what about you, Beard? And actually it was my, I think it's my, I might get it framed. I think it's my best ever Twitter reply. I said, yes, just call me Stanley Chewbrick. <laughs> Stanley Kubrick, the director, chewing a brick. I, I was laughing at myself for about five minutes. That I see. Have you seen the like reality shows where it's like a, a pregnant woman and she's got mad cravings and it's like concrete or she'll eat like the the foam from a sofa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that one. Have you not seen this? No. Yeah, she's like addicted to eating that sofa foam. It's like proper weird. Does she actually eat it? Because I was going to yeah. do yeah. some harm, right? Yeah, yeah, like mad mad sofa cravings. foam. I don't think that was even pregnancy cravings. That was just she was just a bit loopy. <laughs> have you seen you've seen that movie uh swallow you wouldn't have done because it's really weird and before you say anything no is this it's a blue not, movie no no it's not that kind no yeah. it's a it's a really straight i don't even know how it got made it's a film about a woman who's like um she just basically starts swallowing stuff that you shouldn't swallow um like she'll it, she starts off i think by eating like a like a like a nut or a bolt she's like ah oh, that's cool and then she eats like she gets progressively more dangerous and she starts eating like marbles and, and then she eats like something that's jagged, like a piece of jewellery or something like that. Uh, yeah. Or just to see if it can come out the other side. Just because I think... They dragged that film out for 90 minutes. Yes, would be, you know, it's not actually a bad film either. It's about... Oh, the, 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 great, the greater uh, uh, context of the film is that I think she's like... Uh, she's married to some guy she doesn't really love. She's pregnant, but they're part of like some... I think it's implied like a mafia family. So she's kind of... And she's pregnant. So, you know, that's the heir to the... Uh, until they get mad at her when they find out that she's eating stuff because they obviously could compromise the health of the baby. I, I don't think that's what they meant when they said get iron, you know, and say like eat, eat, a, eat a bolt or two. <laughs> you will watch fucking anything you want. Yeah, I, I like filmmaking, you know, because I'm a f- I make films. Uh, don't you I, make YouTube videos? Yeah, which are little you mini, watch fucking mini Mr. films. You you make actual films and you just never watch films. I don't make films. You do. What what sort of stuff you do for like Octagon? Just because documentary, it's not, it's not yeah, but just because it's not feature length, it's still film, right? They call it film because it was filmed originally on film. Yeah, but I'd rather I, that, 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 that has some influence over what you what you you make because it's they, they're interesting to watch for research reasons. Like if you watch like a Martin Scorsese film, and you're like, oh, that's cool. Why is he using like this wide shot, and why is that person leaving the camera that way? Yeah, I find that really interesting. So I'm, I'm, I don't watch it because like it's it's just like odd. You know, sometimes I do. You definitely do. You definitely I watched do. that really one because it was. Films. I watched that one because it, it sounded odd, and I thought, like, how can they make a film out of this? But it, it wasn't a bad film. It's not the worst one I've ever seen. Have you seen a film called Tusk? No, is that the one where Justin Long turns into a walrus? Yeah, this. I can't even watch that. Basically, makes him into a walrus. It's really weird. Fuck me. I am the walrus. <laughs> Very odd. You'd, that, that, if that pops up on my Netflix recommended, I go not today. You wouldn't watch it just out of morbid curiosity. No. No. But you would watch like Jackass 10 for the sixth time. Have you seen the new Fast and Furious movie? I thought you'd be like, itching to tell me about that. <laughs> no? no? Is it in cinema? <laughs> yeah. Is it? I think Mike, so. Mike, Mike, pretending that. like he doesn't know. He's seen it six times. <laughs> We're boys, eh? After this. With his, with his Cine World like regulars car. <laughs> <laughs> Are you back again and watch Fast and Furious 10? <laughs> Third time this week. George, have we decided what you're picking here? Yeah, I think I'd pick the gorillas. I think I'd take the sniper, to be honest, actually, over the rats. That's, that's got to mean it's right, because I never agree with George about... Anything. Pretty much anything. Because yeah. I think surely like bears are like really good at like catching fish and stuff like that. So like if rats are jumping about, they're just going to catch them, aren't they? Like, just I don't think rats would be jumping, jumping would they? The only curveball really is the sheer number of rats because that is loads of rats. I think a bear beats a gorilla. No. 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 Google it. I mean, obviously, it's like that whole- We're going to know. We're not going to find out for sure, are Somebody we? Somebody else will do a bit of this though. <laughs> Just Google it, George. Just Google it. I think that I think it could, you know. It's not because it's like the Bruce, you know, the Bruce Lee's uh, quote, famous Bruce Lee quote says like, "If skill is equal, power will win every time." Uh, but yeah, but I reckon a bear is but stronger skill, than a gorilla. Yeah, but, well, even if they are skill isn't equal, the gorilla is more skilled, isn't it? L- look at the maneuverability of a gorilla. They're basically a human, but like really mm. strong, really fast. A bear can like charge at you and maul you to death. So maybe if you're getting close, but quarters, they can stand up, can't they? Because it's like one on one. Yeah, but I'm, gets under <laughs> why did you go like that? Like he's got, what, he's got boxing gloves. No, no, no. Like I'm thinking like grips. 
your collar tie. Do you do you about that, that, that? I don't know if it's a myth. That story about uh, Mike Tyson going to see a zoo, like like San Diego Zoo or something. You want to and fight? He, one he tried to bribe the zookeeper, let him fight a bear or something. Yeah. And the guy's like, nah, <laughs> you'd probably get killed. But the fact that you could imagine Mike Tyson being that mad that he would do that. Absolutely. It says that bears would actually more than likely win a fight against a silverback gorilla. Who, who is this though who said this? And they, did, they said it. Didn't he have some credentials though? Just the internet. Google, mate, the internet. Just Google says so. It says grizzly bears have 20 claws, several inches in length, one on each toe of their four feet. Silverback gorillas have nails on their fingers and toes like humans. So like, I suppose when you think of the claws, but it's more like the maneuverability, like gorillas are just... Gorillas just coming out, listen, lad. There you go, Pooh Bear. Right hook to the side of the head. Then when it's on the ground, it's going to start ripping bits of it off. There are going to be people listening to this, like, so offended that, like, animal experts going, these fucking idiots. Obviously, our bear's well, going to be a gorilla. We probably could. There's got to be some animal expert in Leeds that we could have paid, like, 200 quid to come on. <laughs> we should probably spend that on the light, but um, they could have, like, overseen this and given us, like, a, but if there's only around there. Well, we literally came up with this topic last night, so... I don't think we'd have got some. Yeah, Adam's time. like, what time am I in tomorrow, boss? And I said, don't bother coming in if you've got an idea because we've got a fuck all to record. And then I turned to Lindsay, I was like, is this a good idea for a podcast? Like, discussing what animals you could knack in a fight. And she just laughed and said, no. And I was like, that means it's it is. good, though. <laughs> that means it is. And Mike agreed. Well, which out of he... those then do you reckon you could take on one on one if it was just one of those? Ooh. Which do you think you I'm could take? I'm taking on a rat easily. That's just getting yeah, the book. Let's, let's eliminate the rat. I'm, vo- I'm volleying that straight in the touch. And the sniper, get rid of the sniper. Uh, what else is there? I've talked about Eagles, wolves, a crocodile, a bear, big wolf. Bull. A crocodile I couldn't beat in a fight, but I could run away from. I think we've established that. Uh, the eagle. Do you have any weapons? Why are you bringing weapons? <laughs> this into is it? like a whole other thing. Well, yeah, because it's one on one, but like you, they've all got like claws and. No, and it's, 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 it's pure like. Like a fist fight. Mano a mano, right? <laughs> it's going to be. Yeah, you just use what you've got. A fist fight. <laughs> <laughs> um. Obviously, I'm losing to the bear. Although, the revenant proves you could survive technically. <laughs> Didn't he get like mounted by a bear? Well, you got mauled by a bear. Yeah, the ball did just kind of got get, like hot full mount. Did not get like <laughs> knock it out. <laughs> did not have sex. <laughs> did the bear not have sex with him? Was that a meme? Or is that did that not no, actually happen? That was a meme. What's wrong with you? I thought it actually happened. No, it didn't happen. No. Um, sniper, I'm probably not gonna get away from because he's gonna be a crack shot, right? The bull, I'll just evade. I reckon, like you say, like if uh, matadors can do it, um, I could probably do it. Uh, the lion I'm losing to, the lion, the bear, the sniper, the gorilla, I'm losing to all those. The rest, I think I've got a chance. But what, about the, what about the eagle? What do you think you could do against an eagle? Uh, just kind of like... <laughs> have you seen, I'm going to see it coming in from a while. Have you seen how big they are, them eagles? Yeah, the, especially those bald eagles, right? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be coming in from a distance, right? And if it doesn't get me on the first swoop with like a fatal blow, then I'm just going to be able to run off, right? Yeah, I saw a bald eagle at the zoo the other week and... I was shocked. I didn't. I mean, I knew they were big, but I didn't know they were that big. Like, if one of them came at me or I saw one of them in the wild, I think that I'd, it'd, get, it'd pick me up and take me. I don't think one can pick you up. Ah, I'm like, fuck, look after me. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, carry on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the only the only one that I think that's in contention is the is the the wolves, right? Are the wolves? Because I, I think I remember saying before on a podcast, I think I could. I'm not sure that I could take a wolf. But I feel like I might have a chance of survival against one wolf. Mm. Well, yeah, they do I, work together. Probably one wolf might back down. It's the thing. I don't think it back down. I'm not an intimidating man. If you like, you're supposed to obviously like, make yourself big and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. It might back down because it's not. They hunt in packs. You see, they don't hunt alone. I, th- I think you're, I, I think we lose to everything on that. Apart from the, obviously <laughs> the a rat and an eagle. That's it. I saw a guy on TikTok with like that looked after wolves and they were massive, mate. Like yeah. just huge. I think I'm taking too much from films because I'm thinking, yeah. I've seen the grey, right? I am it, legend so. where he chokes his dog out. That's why I was thinking, like, if you get on the back of a wolf, do you reckon you could kill it? Yeah, but wolves are not domesticated, are they? <clears throat> they're they're going to have naturally higher uh, levels of strength and agility yeah. and, and just drive to survive. I'm trying to cut my dog's toenails and he's a chihuahua this big and he, like, wriggles and I can't keep hold of him. So I imagine trying to get You on. cut mine. I need, I need mine cut, actually. <laughs> you nibble them. <laughs> nibble them like Paul Scholes. Like that scene on Dumb and Dumber, have you seen it? <laughs> it gets grinded out. Yeah. <laughs> I should have known you'd reference that film, yeah. <laughs> All right. Have we, is that it? Have we completed it? I think we've completed it. Did we win? I think we've dragged that out for as long as possible. <laughs> that was painful, wasn't it? <laughs> Do people be crashing at that tree again that you mentioned? <laughs> Reversing. But luckily, we've got another section called Breaking Beard. Breaking Beard. 
<laughs> Do we even know where we're at with this? I could be like one away from eating, I don't know. I think the last time. Fermented fish. Josh is closer to uh, to the whatever it to is. To death. And you are. So like where the halfway point is, Josh is just closer and you're just further away by one step. Baby, pull me closer. Put my slice inside your toaster. Yeah, yeah, that could be, I, I just can't remember just right off my head. No, <laughs> that could be the next parody song. <laughs> Probably can't get that's quite well known, though, isn't it? Probably couldn't that wouldn't last long. Then take legal. Have action. you thought about your parody song yet for this year? I said that was going to be the last one last year, then, but I feel like it can't be. Matty is already asking me about like is if we're doing it again this year. Matt so you see him, not Matty Healy, Matty, <laughs> Matty, Matty, uh, Matty O'Grady. You should do a 1975 song. They're too popular. It's got to be something that's like under the radar. I think I've got an idea, but like really? we'll see, we'll see. But I want to make the video like really sad, you know, like do a little vignette beforehand, right. And it like if it, it's going to cost like thirty grand to do it or something. So like if we did it, it'd be like we'd have to go that big, and we'd you'd have, have to you, start watching some films. We'd have like to get some professionals in. I get blue in. Why would it be so uh, like? Why would it have to be so high budget? What's the? I think just like the concept of it being like filming three separate things and like. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you about it afterwards. Oh, I still was excited. I don't know if we can do it. Like I'm gonna have to run it by you, and you're gonna have to, you're gonna say like, no, we probably can't do it. Richard Branson style, just say yes and figure it out later. For 30 grand, Adam, we'll figure it no, out. I'm, 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 saying that would probably wait. I'm, I'm looking to negotiate that quite, quite far, quite, quite downwards. Wow, some, yeah, some that's great. 30 grand, you're a bit low on that one, Adam. I reckon that's a 50 grand, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving house, babe. That's it. Maybe we did it. <laughs> Red panty, though. I like we're leaving that bit in. <laughs> we can leave that bit in, sure. Let's do a brick in beard, then. Okay, so seeing as though we're sort of on an animal themed podcast today um all the questions are to do with animals so who wants to go first i fed a goat this weekend <laughs> <laughs> that's, an innuendo. that's a sentence that uh, that's an innuendo isn't it they used to say that I, stroking we'll, we'll, we'll get no we'll get off that well, why were you feeding the goat i went to we went to um blacker hall farm down in Dembydale and uh, had some breakfast and they've got like a little petting thing around the back where you can feed the lambs uh, feed the goats stroke a cow or a calf and uh you, and you there were some pigs and piglets as well fucking stink out there yeah i never really understood that whole like i get zoos but like you know going to farms where it just reeks and you just get to look at a pig living it's in its own, in its own shit i never really understood that. yeah they put the pig on the other side it's a bit rough it's a bit like when when like you know proper clients come in office and we say adam go sit over in corner because we don't always <laughs> like that but it's a bit like that anyway i'll like go first we had Aunt middleton on the phone and i called him like it <laughs> Cockney no better something. <laughs> on FaceTime to middle two, you're like, all right, mate, nice beard. <laughs> it's like, I'm fucking I don't think it was that complimentary, but it was a safe distance away, so it's all right. All right you want to go first, Josh? Yeah, go on. <clears throat> okay. How far away can a wolf smell its prey? Less than a mile, around one mile, or more than a mile away? Don't know. Mm. They, they can't smell quite as good as eagles, I'm told, so. More than a mile. Final answer. Yeah. It is more than a mile away. How, how is that possible? That, seems like, that smell. seems like supernaturally impossible. It's not... More than a mile. It's yeah. not a lot more than a mile, but it is, it is more. Sure, it's got to depend on the terrain as well. Like, if it's... There's nothing <laughs> like, in between it. Well, look, if, if you're in London, they're not smelling prey a mile away. I mean, it's a dog, isn't it? It's like they can, they've got, like, cadaver dogs and... How do you pronounce it? Cadaver. Cadaver. Cadaver dogs. I thought you were... Cadaver. Cadaver. That's what he's called. He's a mic. Answer it on the pod. Get on speaker. It's Danielle's mum. Nothing I can't wrong. deal with that, you know. Like if like Lindsay's mum calls me, even if my mum calls me. She never rings me. It's like. You uh, always think something's wrong. Like yeah, someone's yeah. dying. That's why I put my phone on. Like uh, I put it on airplane mode in the night because I think like, if someone's dead, I'll find out in the morning. I don't need you yeah, calling me at three o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't deal with it. Sure. Well, we survived that phone call. Adam's go. Next question. Oh, we're leaving that in the podcast as well. <laughs> why not? Each podcast now, I've got a phone call on. <laughs> Do you want to go for All right. In fact, what? that last podcast, it was like, do you want to go for breakfast on Sunday? That was on the fucking Sunday we went to stroke, oh, feed the goats. Stroke the goats. The stroke the Stroking, goats. I'm feeding them now. Okay. Okay, what unusual part of a crab's body contains taste buds? Is it its feet, its eyes, or its belly underneath it? Ooh. The last one sounds made up from the way you said it, so... Um, I must say feet. Final answer. If you can even call them feet, but yes, it is feet. Oh yeah. Wow. You, do you want to elaborate on that? <laughs> We're just leaving it there. You've caught a crab. Control. You can taste with the feet. Uh, like no, I quite one. like eating crab though. 
I don't, know, I, don't think I, I don't think I've eaten crab. I've caught a few crabs though, you know, like. Crab meat used to be cheap, isn't it? But it's, it's not actually cheap now. People that eat them crab sticks, you know, when no, you used to go to like a working men's club. That's not real crab though. Yeah, but they've been outside for two hours. Yeah, plus like, them. It's made out of like dead ends of seafood from fa- factory, f- factories, isn't it? Is that what it is? They is get it? all the stuff together and they mash it together. <sighs> That's why you've got to call them seafood sticks now. You can't call them crab <sighs> sticks. I saw a viral video thing the other day and it showed you how they make uh, tuna at Subway. And it's like this powdered, just Google it. Just go, it's, put, not real, it's not real tuna. No, it's like literally, it's like a, it's like a dehydrated bag that they poured into a bowl. Oh, they almost like sand, like it almost like it was stuck together like sand and they had like crumbled it. And then they threw some mayonnaise in it and it kind of started to look like tuna mayo, but it's not actually tuna. Or it might be tuna, but it might be dehydrated t- tuna. I feel like tuna is one of those things, it's, there's no reason to dehydrate it, right? Because like t- t- canned tuna is like super cheap. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want you to bring me sashimi grade shit, but like, you know, when you get the John West, I've got shit loads of that at home. Surviving Apocalypse with that. <laughs> so much canned tuna. There we go. It's on Daily Mail, yeah. That must be true then. See? Ugh. It's like a, a powdered mix. Yeah, like almost like semi-solid. Because that's like, you know, you're in a pinch, you need to get some scram. It's like a half safe bet in it. Like, like, you didn't think they were going to do that to tuna. Yeah, to be fair, I'd, go, I'd get the stuff that looks more like actual meat. I probably wouldn't get tuna from Subway. But I mean, I, 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 I had no, I thought it'd be real tuna at least. Yeah. Or like, not fresh, but not certainly not bricks of dry tuna. Is it right you can only have two, tins of, two tins of tuna a week? Because of like mercury poisoning or something? If it is, I'm, I'm well on my way to being poisoned by mercury. All right. They say that women aren't supposed to have it, right? Because, uh, and a lot of cheap tuna has heavy metals in it, doesn't it? So I don't know. Google, Google that, George. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy metal, man. <metal. laughs> uh, I mean, like lead and all that shit. Go, 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 Google that while you're at your computer. I need to know if I'm going to get mercury poison. I've been doing like a tin of that a, a, a day for about, I don't know, five years. I'm pretty sure you're only supposed to have like two tins a week. I don't think that's right. I mean, I think like, what, what what's, I don't think mercury levels can be that high. That it, but there's like plastics in fish now, isn't there? You know, because of how much we polluted the seas. Apparently, we'll all go down a rabbit hole now. Earth's flat, but <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that like now there's like in our DNA this plastic. You know, what <laughs> <laughs> like microplastics. I thought you were gonna say like Michael Jackson. Then I was gonna say you're probably not wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> Says it's still safe to eat, but it does contain um, higher concentrations of mercury than any other fish. I think. On maybe not any other fish, but how it has many a higher concentration. tins of tuna per week? I think that's probably the li- but eating tin tuna. No more than four cans of tuna per week. I probably don't do this more. This is than- on the NHS. This is because tuna has higher levels of mercury than fish. Um, if you are breastfeeding, there is no limit on how much tuna you can eat. As in, like, you're not, there is no recommendation. As in, don't eat it. Oh, right. I think that's that reads as though. Yeah, if you're an average person without a baby, only have four. But if you've got if you've got a baby in your in your stomach, eat as much as you want. How many tins of tuna do you have a week? Probably six. Probably you have to drop that, mate. You do 33 percent reduction. You have to like <laughs> replace it for smells. Maybe. Uh, I get the good stuff though. I get the high grade, like the John uh, John West, the one that doesn't come in the can. That doesn't come in a can. Yeah, it comes in those fr- plastic fridge pots. Oh shit, that's posh. That's expensive. That. Yeah, but then you don't have to drain it, do you? You don't have to drain it. That's Money. okay. That's, that's that's like proper wealth nowadays, isn't it? When you can get the posh tuna. Yeah, paying an extra twenty p for <laughs> some plastic <laughs> plastic tuna. What a fucking mess this package is. Yeah, we've just talked five minutes about tuna. Know, how long have we been going, man? It's been going too fucking long. <laughs> An hour and three minutes. This is important information. Very. We might be, sure. might be helping people. Yeah. I, I never knew that. And I, I know quite a, a lot about nutrition, I think. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're ready for the next question, Josh. Go. What is the most deadly creature in the world? Is it the Brazilian wandering spider, the mosquito, or humans? <laughs> that that's, depends on how you, how, you, how you define it. Yeah, what's the, in, in what sense? I reckon humans are the most deadly. Humans kill. Final answer. Yeah, 100%. Humans kill more shit than a fucking wandering spider. It's a mosquito. Mosquito. Oh, malaria, yeah. Estimated to cause 750,000 to a million human deaths per year. That's just humans. Yeah, you forgot malaria, man. How many fucking they tuna fish diseases. do we kill a year? 
I don't think it's... We're fucking a, deadly? I don't think it's approximating uh, the life of animals to, to humans. You didn't say what what animal we're killing. You just said most deadly. You know what, George? If I got that wrong, I'd have taken it and I'd have been like, yeah, I forgot malaria. So It is mosquitoes. I feel yeah. like I've been absolutely done over here. That's what the answer well, is. The, I can't you, say no more. You're wrong. That. You're wrong. Go on, George. My turn. <laughs> I'm proper offended by both of you. Uh, which bird's eye is bigger than its brain? An owl, an ostrich, or an American woodcock? <laughs> I was about laughed at that. <laughs> Woodcock. Um, tell me again. An uh, owl and what? An owl, an ostrich, or an American woodcock? Ostrich. It is an ostrich. It's just yes. a shape of the head. They've got fucking huge eyes and yeah. dense on them. reckon you could take an ostrich in a fight? No, they're apparently. <laughs> they freak me out then. They're apparently, like, really brutal in fights. They'll just, like, boot you. Like, Have you uh, seen the like, yeah, talons? They've got, they've got like, talons, like, they're, uh, they're, like, like a dinosaur. Descended from, like, raptors mm. or whatever. And uh, I do sometimes behave like an ostrich on a head in the sand when things go wrong. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm glad that I got that right, though. Well done, mate. Is that it? Or is, is, is it a three thing? One more each. All right. Um, what animal squirts blood from its eyes as a defense mechanism? <laughs> is it frilled neck lizards, short horn lizards, or a leopard gecko? That's hard, that man. B. The short horned lizards? Yeah. You're right. Fuck yeah. Yeah, the one in three chance. It squirts blood from its eyes. As a defense mechanism. That is odd. That is really weird. I don't think I'd ever see something bleeding from the eyes and think, oh, I'm going to lose this fight. <laughs> I think he's already on his way out, man. <laughs> I'd finish him off. Maybe that's the idea, playing dead. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, go on then. All right, last one. This will be for the clean sweep. This will be for the clean sweep, yeah. What animal has the strongest sense of smell? Is it elephants, snakes, or wolves? Copy wolves, surely. Final answer. I feel like you're bluffing me there, but yeah, I'm gonna say wolves. What elephants, snakes, or wolves? Yeah. Hmm. I'm saying wolves. It's actually elephants. Well, they do have Which a is really a very surprising answer. Well, they have a large nose, don't they? But I probably wouldn't. Uh, well, I got it wrong. So we we just draw, draw that week. Yeah. Then. Draw this week. Oh wait, did you get two? We'll we have to find out if I can rip your bollock off now. No, he got. No, nah, he got one wrong. One he wrong. got one wrong. Yeah. Oh yeah, did I win? No, no, you both, both got, got one wrong. wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Spotify never buying this man. <laughs> never. <laughs> right, we reading some vessels. One more. I've got a question for Adam. Actually, it's genuinely, this is because you're into nutrition and stuff. I need to. So, right, summer. I need a summer body, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sitting around eight summer 2024, yeah. Because yeah. like, I've only got like you're I can't do much. I hair. can't do much with that in a month. I, I, it's not. I'm not. In a, I'm not in bad nick, right? But I've got about six weeks before I go on my jollies. I'm off to Greece. And I figured that if I could ask anybody, what's a good day of eating look like? Bear in mind, we, we spoke about this, like about uh, amount of protein I need because I'm obviously getting mad gains in the gym. Uh, but I need to be in a calorie deficit. Uh, what do you suggest as a, da a daily meal uh, plan? Just off the cuff. What you, you, and you want to look and I've like... And so I've already had breakfast this morning. I've had the, yeah. the Adam um, yogurt, blueberries and honey. Right, but so you've... But, but I need about 180. But you have realistic expectation. You don't think you're turning up to. Uh, no, I'm not an Olympia. To the gym, I, I'm, 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 I basically need to probably. I reckon four kilos. Like my, well, my first question would be like a psychological level. Like why? Why do you want to? Why do you want to look better? Who are you trying just to impress? Just to you know get rid of muffin top a bit. Look, I, I look all right on on the beach. Oh well, then I would just say uh, eating. If if what well, you got six weeks. Yeah. You're going to have to, if you want to make any real progress, you have to eat in a pretty significant calorie deficit, okay. which would not be advisable, right? Uh, so I don't know how many, how many calories you need to eat in a day to stay the same weight. Probably about two and a half thousand. That's pitiful for a man your size, lift more weights. Um, so I would say you're going to have to get that at probably like 1,600. Wow, that's heavy, that. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, you only got six weeks, man. Shit, like the, yeah. the, the biggest commodity when you're doing any kind of body transformation is time, right? The, lo yeah. the longer you've got, if you've got like a year, then it's going to feel like a cakewalk because you don't have to, you're not really depriving yourself of much. So, so I'd get 1600 that. 1600 calories. I'd get that, yeah, I'd, I'd get down there and tr I wouldn't, re I'd be, macros would be like maybe 40, 50, 10, maybe. I wouldn't really want to dip that low with the fat, but uh, I'd normally say 40, 40, 20 protein, carbs, yeah. fat. Uh, but you're probably going to want to go, yeah, 40 carbs, 50 protein and, uh, and and 10 fat or maybe even lower a little bit with the carbohydrate provided it doesn't affect your training too much you'd have to suss that out by yourself um would you up the calorie count 
to compensate for the training oh. uh, fractionally. You no, know, like, no, no. No, you just, you you, just you train have, you're in a, a massive mate. deficit. Yeah, right, okay. yeah. Because, I mean, you only got six weeks. Yeah. And you're going to look sucked up and awful after that. But um, <laughs> probably last t- two weeks, you might want to go like, I would never advocate a ketogenic or low carb diet normally. But if, like, if your motivation is to get as much off as you can, maybe the last week or so, you could do that and then just do some mad. Uh, you know, if it's weight as well, like some mad dehydration thing, like some of your MMA mates. I am. Yeah, well, ultimately, if I were you, I just wouldn't bother. Right. I just keep training and just think I don't need to look that good on the beach. Um, I don't care what people think, but I mean, that's up to you. Fair enough. What? What? So, like, sixteen hundred calories. What? What? What meals would you be eating in sixteen hundred calories? Would you go for the? That's right, Matt. I'd whatever fits those. Uh, I'd go. For, I'd be eating like very high. Uh, high protein. High volume. Uh, low calorie foods. So I'd be eating like shit. Me, because I love to eat. So I'd be eating like shit tons of lettuce. Anything that's going to fill me up. Fruit, vegetables, lean meats. I'd be avoiding things that are high in calories like uh, nuts and, uh, you know, oily fish and stuff like uh, st- I'd be going with like your chicken, turkey, tuna, leaves. That'd be basically it. You all get your non- uh, non fat dairy. There we go then. That's what- I-, I wouldn't bother because it just make you miserable. <laughs> is that what is that? That explains it. Yeah. You're like shredded all year round. It does 10,000 calories and it has 200 calories. It just has lettuce for, <laughs> for five days. Right, yeah. Um, should we finish on a fess hole then? Let's finish on a fess hole. It's time for a fess hole. Coming from you. Okay, so we've got one fess hole. Um, I've got arsehole envy. My wife's looks like <laughs> the exquisite pink, lightly dimpled center of a delicate flower. Mine, in comparison, looks like an aerial photo of the first day of the Somme. <laughs> Cratered, filthy and bloody and with the with the lingering stench of death. Why is it bloody? That's the that's the concern there. Yeah, that, that's grim that in it. Why did you have to do that man? Like this <laughs> podcast been bad enough so far without the the image of a man's battered arsehole. <laughs> you describe yours often though. Mine's not so given what I do for a living, mine's not actually that bad. It's hairy, but it's not. I mean I've not looked at it for a while. I'm worried about why is he looking at his own arsehole, like in the mirror or something. Yeah, have you ever looked at your own arsehole? Uh, yeah, once or twice. Normally when I think there's something wrong. Like, shit, have I got a hemorrhoid? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I better check. I can't even ask looking for another festival. That's me in that one. We had, we had another one earlier though, didn't we? We read one out. Oh, yeah. yeah, we technically have done two this I've week. Two. Well, I think we've, no I think we've that's, been, that's a long podcast as well. I think that's successful. Yeah. No, well, length does not always mean success. <laughs> it's Mike, I, Mike will tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in this case, I would argue that's probably the worst we've done since the first month we started doing this. Do you think? Yeah, certainly. But I, I think there's been some of the lot worse ones. I think there's been worse ones. Last week yeah, was shit, far. wasn't it? <laughs> what was well, last week? The my maga love stories because it was just like <laughs> I couldn't t- I couldn't say anything. I was restricted on my information and jokes. Yeah. <laughs> got, any, got any guests lined up? You got you paid for a blue tick now on Instagram. Come on, uh, believe it or not, I haven't got any guests on. Uh, I thought you were going to say we have one then. No, come on, man. Uh, you're the you're the celebrity. Yeah, but no, but people see what I do and they instantly don't want to be involved with it. I think I, I think he's got like a black mark next to his name within the industry because he's ignored think he does. people. I think for he's some... put it there himself. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's like ignored people for that long and said no to side men. Just think we could have had KSI sat there. Oh, yeah, you could have two footed him. That would have been a laugh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I've got, I guess. No, because I, I, I don't think that's the reason. The what? reason is the same reason that I turned down podcasts because, like, I think, why? Why do you want to tell the same story 15 times in a row? It is, yeah, it is mad. But yet you turn up here every week and talk to us about fucking you, fighting, yeah. fighting, <laughs> fighting gorillas. Shit, you're under- I saw you, you try to uh, strong arm uh, uh, Paddy the Buddy coming on, didn't you? Yeah. Just message him saying, you busy, Paddy. <laughs> yeah, you busy, mate. Please. Paddy, we've got 20,000 subscribers now. Do you want to come on this podcast? <laughs> believe it or not, ignore us. Yeah. Mm. Shit happens. I believe it. it. <laughs> Can't blame him, can you? <laughs> Somebody doesn't hear this one. Right, let's call it a draw then. Is that it? I think so, yeah. Fucking hell, we're both out of it today. <laughs> <laughs>